So that's awesome. We finally kind of figured it out. Um, even though quarantine is making us use technology we wouldn't normally use. I've wanted to have you on for a really long time and talk to you. Um, so the backstory to what we'll go over today is a lot of the history of the Pink Princess, which, shameless plug, you can find if you uh, want to purchase it. And there'll be a link on our website and in the video description and all that kind of stuff. Um, but I had hit up somebody else in the plant community, I believe it was Siddith, and said, hey, I've just been on a hunch, like, what? Where did Pink Princess come from? Siddith just mentioned that uh, you, Georgia, were working on uh, making a better uh, care guide to it and trying to at least put into writing what we do know, even though we don't know everything. Mm -hmm. um, and I kind of fell on that train as well and spent two or three nights late at night uh, talking and trying to, uh, to see what I could find too before just more of your background as an artist there's wonderful illustrations in here talk to me more about all that stuff cool um so i i have a lot of pink princesses depending on the time of year sometimes more sometimes less right now i think i have like nine probably propagated somewhere between 25 and 50 over the last couple years and Ooh. so i have an instagram account and one time I did like seven days of just pink princess photos and people really liked it. I'm like, hmm, okay, maybe I'll just do more of these pink photos. Yeah. And in the process of propagating that many plants inside and kind of by myself, I, I learned a lot. And when you post photos online, people ask you questions, whether you actually know what you're doing or not. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh yeah. The questions will come. <laughs> yeah. So I, started fielding a lot of the same questions so i made an, an faq highlight on my instagram page so whenever people would ask me the standard what kind of light does it need what kind of soil does it need what kind of humidity like there's just there were a series of questions that i got asked all the time so i just made these standard responses here's more or less my answer but that wasn't quite enough like a photo or even a video and some words isn't isn't enough to explain to somebody a more in-depth thing like what kind of light does it need but um right. for my nine to five i'm a graphic designer i design books for an architecture firm so books have kind of been my thing ever since i went to school and um like i used to make uh handmade journals and okay. hand stitch them and so i've just kind of always loved making books and and i draw and, and plants and so they all kind of you know came together and I decided I wanted to make a book because I spend all this time on this Instagram account, but I don't, I don't do like paid sponsorships or advertising. So like, what's a way that I can put a small price tag on all this information that I've gathered and also use this thing that I love to do, which is make books. And so I made it a book. That's and all. <laughs> thank you. Um, so it started out with the like, whatever seven questions or so that everybody asks and then also some things that I wanted to know like when I was researching the soil parts I'm like what even is vermiculite and why do you mm -hmm. add charcoal and so that led me down rabbit holes that I like had to narrow down and, and one of them was what's a pink princess like yeah it's it's an incredibly elusive question. I was just gonna say, and I'm just an artist, so like this is just my understanding. Like, <laughs> well, and I'm a 25 year old grower, so what do I know? Um, <laughs> just feel like I should preface that. Like, it's <laughs> what all what all do we know, and what is kind of left up to question, or how did we get to the conclusions? And I don't want to spoil things for the book either. You got to go read the book too, but. You know, I've, I've been I've been telling this story to different people for a while now, and it's still hard for me to get down in like a straight line because I oh, learned yeah. about it in so many different ways. Like I pieced together research papers, and then I talked to experts in the field, and you reached out to me. And so like it it came from all these different directions. But my best guess is that Bob McCulley, Robert McCulley, of Apopka, Florida, bred this plant, and I figure that because he bred 
thousands, hundreds of thousands. Yeah, that's what I, under the Macaulay finale, the last one of his published patented works mm -hmm. is which his wife filed for that patent refers to her going through his thousands of potentially unidentified species and pulling out the Macaulay finale hybrid, naming mm -hmm. it Macaulay's finale and, and processing that patent, which was the last patented um, hybrid filly that he put out there. Yep. I remember I was telling this story to somebody and they were like, well, how do they not know specifically which one was bred to which? I mean, he was dealing with greenhouses with just thousands and thousands of plants. What was, was a university did testing on DNA to see mm -hmm. which plants had been hybridized for some popular philodendrons, um, which is a really fascinating research yep. paper. And I'll probably try to link it below and stuff. I was going to um, say all the links to every research paper that I have are referenced in the back of the book. If you want to read more. You are awesome. See that <laughs> that that's why you're you're an expert on this stuff. But you can see though through though that specific research paper that yeah. if nothing else, Pink Princess was hybridized by multiple of the same plants that Robert McCauley specifically was known for trying to hybridize, the color, the leaf shape, the growing style that he wanted. So it would make sense that if he's got plants that look like this and he's got a lot of them, so there's a lot of potential for variety that one of them may have been a pink princess. Now, the the next step is where I'm not entirely sure where the pink princess happened, where the green leaf plant with pink variegation, did that happen on his, like, did he hybridize a plant that put out partly pink leaves or was it when it then went to tissue culture? Tissue culture is in a very basic form, taking a small piece of a plant at a node uh, and treating it with the right amount of hormones and keeping it in a sterile lab environment to cause that single node to, instead of branching out and growing one new growth point, to grow multiple p new growth points out of the single node, which allows you to exponentially grow more of the plant through mm -hmm. that process. There are caveats to tissue culture, one being it's very hard to mass produce things with natural mutations like mm -hmm. Pink Princess, like Variegated Monstera. Mm -hmm. um, and on the flip side, for the plants that are easy to tissue culture replicate, like Birkin is a perfect example right now on the market, easy to be able to tissue culture replicate. If one batch or one grouping isn't sterile or has an issue in TC production, that's how you get some of the weird half variegated, half red um, mm -hmm. Birkins. And that is the same principle we assume perhaps could have led us to Pink Princess was trying to produce and get multiple growth points off one little area. A speck of something was in there, got mixed in, thus Pink Princess was born. But that's what TC is from a very uneducated, I don't wear a lab coat, I don't own a TC uh, uh, company. Um, but that is my basic definition of what a TC is. Cool. From my perspective, again, all this is a working hypothesis, yeah. but I'm just based on the fact that it's variegation is a mutation. Um, I don't think it was likely that it was a pink plant hybridized with a burgundy one, and thus you got yeah. some of both. It is fairly yeah. easy for me to say that it was a result of the plant mutating. Now, whether that was because the plant was put into a microwave and subject to something and that's what happens you know and that's what spurred the mutation of the cell structure or perhaps like you're saying when it was in tc a little less than perfectly sterile some came out with some mutations that way which is where the variegated tetraspermas that are on the market those yeah. are results of slight problems and in tc tyler, production yeah and like tyler thrasher's uh, sport monstera like that's just one that one of I assume tissue culture, thousands and thousands of plants, and one just because it's all they're all mutating tissue culture. I mean they're all mutating plant tissue. So at some point, some weird mutation is going to happen if you've got that many plants. Yeah, I was I was thrilled when you reached out to me about like about the history of it because I suspected that it was Macaulay. I had all of the information, but I didn't have anybody that close to him that would give me any more confirmation. Nobody that could say that I got this plant probably from Macaulay himself. When I started piecing together 
the story and that it may be linked to Macaulay. And if it is linked to Macaulay, that means it's linked to Apopka, Florida, which is only about 40 minutes from where we are. It's in the central Florida area. If that all links together, chances of us having some of the oldest pink princesses um, or the longest living pink princesses could also be at play. But we have plants that are very clearly been trimmed, not a dozen times, not two dozen times, but probably 60 times. And every time we trim it, regardless of if we take the stem back to not a single leaf, whatever we do to it, those cuttings come out the highest variegation with almost 100% consistency. I have very rarely seen those plants. Now, once we take a cutting and we plant it, environmental conditions kick in, the plant will do what the plant wants to do. But those original stock plants that we do have, their consistency of the quality of variegation that they put out mm -hmm. is extremely high. Yep. Um, Best I've seen, I mean, of like anywhere. It's why I recommend you guys all the time. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> well, and, and we, you know, we obviously can't keep up with demand either, but it was starting to piece. So then I was like, well, I know we didn't get them from Macaulay directly, but I wonder if my family uh, knew of the history of Pink Princess or knew of Macaulay specifically. So I asked my dad, um, you know, hey, do you ever remember this guy named Robert Macaulay? And dad said, no, I mean, obviously I know who he is, Macaulay's finale. Um, and I'm like, yeah, he was Central Florida. He owned Bamboo Nursery. My dad was like, oh yeah, oh yeah. I remember going there in high school. He was one of the weirdest growers because all of his greenhouses were fairly small in size, but he had multiple of them and they were all glass, um, mm -hmm. which was something you don't see in commercial greenhouses because we're Florida, you get a hurricane, it's much easier to place a thousand dollar plastic roof than it is to go figure out how to repair your, your glass greenhouse. So um, it was pretty unusual at the time and it's still pretty unusual today to have glass greenhouses. So I was like, that's so cool. My, you know, my dad remembers going to this place and then he said, yeah, we used to go there to pick up plants for my grandpa's retail shop. The Gabriella, I guess, tie into the story is that my, not me, uh, unfortunately he passed away quite a long time ago, but my dad and my grandpa um, did interact with Mr. McCauley and, and purchased plants from his business, which I think is just a really neat uh, tie-in to, to what you've put here in your book. I mean, you're so close that like it, it just it just all adds up. So like that was the last little bit of the puzzle that I needed to make me feel comfortable enough to say that, yeah, I really think that this is guy that made the plan. And of course we don't know. And if, if I've edited it out or I'll put it again here, he passed away several decades ago and his surviving widow passed away three or four years ago i i didn't actually know she had passed away yeah uh well i was gonna drive to her house uh dead seriously because i looked up her the name that was associated with the macaulay's finale patent wow it's like shoot that's 15 minutes away i'll go <laughs> knock on her door and be like hey ma'am i have a few questions about your late husband uh because the plant community needs to know um and then she uh she had passed away as well i think as the plant community has seen over the last couple of years there is going to be a lot more science being done to figure out what plants belong in what categories for real mm -hmm. and which, how their lineage formed and what plants they were hybridized from. And I think the more we do that research, the more we're going to finally start to see the picture of Macaulay's handiwork. All um, of the work that he did. Yeah, because like we said, thousands of unidentified species were just sitting there. And mm -hmm. he just wanted to pick the best one, or his mm -hmm. wife did when they released Macaulay finale. It's hard to talk about because it's this big conundrum that like it all, all signs point to yes, but. Yeah. If this process has taught us nothing else, document, document, document. Mm -hmm. I'm doing it right now on, on sports we have and things that we're working on. Take yeah. the photo of it the first time you see it try to get a second generation of that to grow, take a photo of that. Um, because although science can kind of help us later DNA analyze and try to get us to where we are today to say it would make logical sense it was Macaulay who crafted P 
pink princess or at least the base plant and then maybe the pink mutation came from another process but that is available via dna what we don't have are the photos of the originals or any type of documentation of what year that was done in or so you know so if if i've learned anything it's document as much as you can especially if you think you have something unique yep definitely yeah when i first started writing this book i think my first draft said I have only seen one pink princess flower. And I think I found it on uh, Pinterest or something. I found this photo of a pink princess flower and I reached out to the, the, the contact email in that account and was like, Hey, this is really awesome. Do you have any other photos? Cause I was really looking for one because a, um, a flower is broken apart into a spathe, a spadix and a, uh, the top is male and the bottom is female. And I wanted to see, you could only like the bottom part of the spathe had started to close up so you couldn't see the female parts and I wanted to take a photo of those. But she did eventually reach out to me and that's the the two photos that are on the page are from, I believe her name is Stacy Schaefer. And she's got the most massive plants that are, I believe she had some flowering like a couple weeks ago and just really cool because they have, uh, different colors depending on the variegation of the plant so like sometimes the spathe is dark red and sometimes it's hot pink depending on like what's there when it was produced and are you, are you saying within pink princess they have very uh variation <laughs> to their their blooms philodendrons yeah. and theriums all the different aeroids we classify by their inflorescent so mm -hmm. if you have a plant that's inflorescent is also changing mm -hmm. um that really goes to show the the instability of that given species. Yep. That's, it's literally how you identify plants. Like you would think that you would identify plants based on their leaves and the colors, but it's not. It's broken down, taxonomy of plants is broken down by the flower. Like that's how all of the arrowids are grouped together is because they all have the same spathe wrapped around a spadix inflorescence. Um, but yeah, that's a, that's a good point. Cause like they should, you should be able to say this plant has a white space and a pink middle and, and it doesn't, I mean, I'm the two photos that are on there, same person and they're two totally different looking flowers. I'm actually, that that's mine there. And it's almost as tall as me now. And I'm, it's overgrown at stake, but I don't, I'm, I'm not going to chop it until it blooms. Cause I, I want to see a bloom so bad. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You could put another. You could put another piece of wood with that. You got another four feet in that room. Yeah. <laughs> good point about that. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. Um, well, I just again everything you you did in this this book and in this research and just getting to talk with you um, as another member of the plant community doing work on trying to figure out where Pink Princess came from and all the other things that we do. Um, it's just been so cool. Um, to get to talk with you, Georgia. Uh, everybody, I would definitely recommend go out there. I can't wait for the paper version. I can't. Uh, but go out there. Make sure you get the PDF. Um, if you want to be fancy, my wife was like, you could fold it and then like make it into like a book book. And I'm like, no, I, I could see twice as much information per page this way. Um, so anyways, um, but you can make your book in the meantime with uh, helping out uh, Georgia with the five bucks and also grab yourself a pin. Uh, support you. the people who are in the a community doing doing work like this, um, especially considering sellers like us. We would have never been able to, like you were saying earlier, we, we could come up with the, the one sentence for how much light, one sentence for humidity, one sentence for this. But that this book that you've written is just so much more elaborate than that. And it's such a great read, has so much good information. Um, your Instagram, you want to plug your Instagram where people can check out that stuff? Yeah, sure. My Instagram is plants, period, in, period, things. Okay. I'll put that on screen just in case they, uh, they don't get it. <laughs> yeah. Shane, it was really great chatting with you. I've been looking forward to this, and I'm so glad. I'm so glad it worked out. I know there were some technical difficulties, but I'm glad we pushed through it. This was Yeah, great. yeah. And I will get to editing, and, and thank you for everything. And um, with that... Um, we'll see you next time and keep us posted on whatever you're working on next. We'll do. Stay safe uh, out there. Man. <laughs>